such that even if I were to understand detailed methods for deciphering vanilla's vanilla spires RNG, it wouldn't work here. Merle says I had a watcher run where the only card I took in Act One was Wallop killed three elites in Hexa no problem. Yeah, and and actually we once demonstrated on the stream. Uh, I took a, a non-Ascension Watcher. The challenge was, um, how far can you get without taking any cards? And the answer was, I beat the heart. <laughs> that was a fun run. That was really close heart fight, too. So let's see, what's our Act 1 looking like here? We have Hexagos waiting for us at the end of the Act. We have a few early Elites, although you can opt out. I see there are some paths to sneak through here. Kind of like this formation of Elites, although there's also a lot of rest sites up this side. Interesting. Starting options are choose a card, common relic, lose our money for a rare card choice. This is pretty strong. Are we going to enact one shop? Maybe. This is actually well positioned to let us buy potions for the Burning Elite. So that's food for thought. But I could definitely see taking the gold for a rare card and avoiding these garbage location shops. This looks like a very good gold for a rare card, actually, the more I think about it. That said, a common relic can definitely... definitely... pay off pretty substantially with some additional help. Hey there, Quinto Bean. Grats on A20 with all characters. For improving your A20 consistency, that's, that's definitely tough. Uh, it took a long time for me before I started, stopped getting bodied by Act 2 and 3 consistently. And part of that was valuing front load a lot more. Valuing cards that have an immediate impact. Shunning um, excessive amounts of power cards or cards that require multi-turn payoffs of any kind. Just try to put a big focus on cards that have the biggest immediate impact and the upgrades that have the biggest immediate impact. And that can really help you with uh, Act 2 in particular, where you're just being tested in, you know, how quickly can you do 100 damage. For Act 2, dealing 100 damage in 3 turns is kind of your golden ticket out. It's uh, an easy kill on Avocado, an e easy kill on Chosen before you get blapped, and an easy kill on the Spheric Guardian before you get slapped for 22. Yeah, valuing long-term too highly is, is definitely an easy thing to do in Spire. You're making, picking cards and trying to, like, put together this endgame build that you're envisioning. But the reality is you have to have your deck succeed at every single step of the journey in order to get to the endgame in the first place. It's the tricky part of deck builders. Not only are you putting together cards that work synergistically, you are also constantly after every card edition, playing with the deck and requiring it to actually do something. Let's take this rare card. Let's do it. Bludgeon, Fiend, Fire, or Corruption. I really like Bludgeon Act 1. However, Fiend, Fire is also very good in Act 1 and is definitely the better card long term. Fiend, Fire scales crazy well with card draw, or retain, and if we add things that benefit from exhaust, like Dark Embrace or Feel No Pain, um, those also become instantly insane. So while Bludgeon is the king of front load, Fiendfire is also the king of front load, and it's the king of exhaust synergies as well. Therefore, I'd much rather take the Fiendfire, because it gives us so many other options throughout the rest of the run, while additionally still providing that immense upfront damage that we want. Uh, especially with an upgrade. That's the kind of card that will let us take the Burning Elite, probably without too much of an issue here. But let's start out with a few combats. I want to see if we're getting potions or not. And then we can take events or more combats to get potions. All right. Friendly Fire. Remember, kids, Friendly Fire isn't. Ouch, my face. All right, plus two for that fight. We do get an attack potion, a great start. And wow, excellent cards here. The poor man's fiend fire is pretty good if you don't have a real fiend fire. I'd actually have to talk about this as a real pick if it weren't for our starting fiend fire. But uh, since we do have fiend fire, we super duper take in flame, which is not only a fiend fire booster, but a hexagos killer of a card. And uh, yeah. 
I don't think I have to talk too much about why this is very good. It makes the Fiend Fire hit super strong. It makes all our other attacks hit super strong. Let's us pick up cards like Pummel. Give me that. Hey there, Molly Yubi. Congrats on getting past A10 with all the characters. Here's to more victories for you in the future. Max health cultist, no problem with our friend fire. Let's see, nine times four is only 36. So I will block. Full health. It's unfortunately a weak potion. And there is a searing blow, hold on. One, two, three, four, that's not enough. Five, five I would actually go for, but four is not enough. We do have two potions, so I'm down to take a couple events here. We could think about an extra elite, but that requires going through the shop, which is not going to be worth it unless the serpent appears or something. Metallicize feels too slow. When is the right time to pick it? It's okay in Act 1 and Act 2. Really good against Lagavulin, the sentries, all of the Act 1 bosses, all of the Act 2 bosses. Rarely do I recommend trying to do a Metallicize deck or whatever that might be to your brain. Um, trying to play more and more copies of Metallicize often just lets you fall further and further behind in combats. But it can be useful. Um, even late game in the heart fight, having that consistent block every turn can help a bit. I do like stacking it with a uh, dual wield to make more copies. It's one of my favorite ways to beat uh, champ. I like it especially in conjunction with the Orichalcum Relic because they do synergize. Uh, they activate at the same time so they can stack together. And that can be quite nice. Or if you have the thread needle, Dingus Buttercus. Thanks for the prime sub in the five months. Still stinky spire. That's all right. Happens to us all. Do I want a sword boomerang here? It's a really good card with the inflame. I don't love it that much. It's one of my least favorite strength scaling cards at the moment, but it does some work sometimes. Tavqua, thanks for the Prime sub on the 41 months. Euler's Prime sub. I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip. Has been a while... Uh, heck. Has been a while since we've uh, seared some blows. I haven't gotten that many good opportunities for it. But my face, sir. Here we go. Pommel Strike. Pommel Strike with Inflame and Friend Fire is excellent. With an upgrade, it can draw more cards, making the Fiend Fire hit even harder. There's also Carnage here for a powerful two-cost attack, but we already have one in Fiend Fire. Let's take the thing that's synergistic. Heck yeah, Phil, I'm showing off the new merch. By the way, merch, Twitch chat, is back. Want a shirt like this? You can get it right there at Baylorlord.com as well as being discounted until the end of the month. Fiend Fire is kind of like a Searing Blow. You can upgrade it multiple times by adding more cards to your hand. Lauren Cates with the three months, just less than a pie month's worth of subbing. Can the merch ship outside of the U.S.? Yes, but I, I, I will warn you that um, international shipping does end up being quite pricey, so you can get a, a merch shirt shipped to Europe or Asia, I believe, but you'll be paying a lot for one t-shirt. More than it's worth, certainly. The uh, discount might help with that, making it a bit more affordable, but you're still looking at quite a bit, again, for a, just to a single t-shirt. You'll have to buy 20 then, that's right. I'll take in Golden Idol here, give me more money, we can lose a bit of max health. Go down to 68. I'm fine with that. Could think about losing current health, but I've got a relatively ambitious act planned out. I don't think I'm going to mess with that. Let's just lose uh, max HP here. Go to 68 out of 68. Gain more money and match and keep. Uh-oh. This could be anything. We could get a rare card. We could get two curses. Let's see. First card is an exhume. 
Let's do opposite corners. Second card, Whirlwind. That's what I'm talking about. What about this one now? Clumsy. If I click on a new card, we have a chance of getting a Clumsy, so I'm going to click back on Exhum here. And then this is a Bash. Let's go middle next. We got a Bash, apparently. And there's a Wild Strike. Do I want a Wild Strike? Not really. Take the Exhum, though. All right, we got a Rare card and a Bash. Cool. I kind of like it, actually. I took Bash on purpose? No, I, I didn't know wh where the second Bash was. I clicked on a new card. I guess I was willing to risk adding a Bash to see something else, and uh, we ended up getting Exhum and Bash out of the deal. I'm fine with it, personally. Feeling abashed. Detonator 5000. Time flies when you're having fun. Thanks for the seven months in the Prime sub. Health flies when you draw no block. Ouch. Keeping these potions for our upcoming Burning Elites. Um, Bash Pummel Strike won't kill, so we're looking for Pummel Strike into either Defend or Fiend Fire here. Get the Fiend Fire. Excellent. We also get a Power Potion. And a Flame Barrier. There's a block card that I can get behind. Cleave is also passable, given that we have no area attacks at the moment, but I'll take a Flame Barrier to help us get out of Act 1. And I'll take a Power Potion over the Weak Potion. Power Potion can really help in this fight in particular, and I think our matchup against these three is pretty bad, so let's use the Power Potion. Evolve... Fire Breathing, Feel No Pain, Dark Embrace, any of these will pretty much completely solve the fight. There's Feel No Pain and Evolve. Both of those, I think, are better than the Demon form. Feel No Pain is going to be better because of our Bean Fire here. We just want to take out one of them, and then the Feel No Pain against alternating sentries should be pretty free. Although we will lose a few cards in the process. Some good cards, no less. That's okay. One more you. Bean Fire you. So again, we've lost a lot of our good cards. We're actually going to be reliant on the dazes for block. Kind of funny. Well, I can also exhume Fiend Fire. You know what? Let's do that. You're dead, too. Exhume Fiend Fire. I like it. But now I have no cards. Great fight. Get a lot of money and the Red Skull, giving us more strength below half health. We're also offered a Juggernaut Barricade in this deck. Hello? Juggernaut Barricade. Hmm. I'm tempted by Barricade. How did the Seated Silent Run go? We couldn't get out of Act 1. It looks looks like a tough seed that Zeknar found, that's for sure. It looked like there were ways to win it, though, along the route that we took. But even with the foreknowledge of how bad it was, it was, it was bad. It was really bad. Pretty hard for us to do anything with the barricade now. It's mostly dead weight, in fact. Um, barring maybe the Lagervalin fight. But it could get crazy later. Juggernaut has no synergies now. Remember that, that we don't have a real Feel No Pain. That was a one from the Power Potion. So we have no synergy there. Do you ever lose an Act 1 by playing too safe? 
Uh, pretty much by definition, safe play is intended to get you out of Act 1. It's pretty hard to lose Act 1 by playing safe, but you, you can end up failing the boss check by being too safe, taking too few elites, taking too few combats especially, and not getting um, card rewards that can kill the boss. I'm going to grab this barricade. I, I want to find out how much dead weight it is. I think our curse tolerance is currently high enough from the mastery challenge. I, I, I can tell that we're okay with a, a garbage card for now, uh, given that it can be an important piece of a late game synergy for us. It also does actually help in one of our elite fights. Do I want to go straight into an elite fight now? Get more events. Yeah. Oh. Easy game. And it is Lega. Although I might just fiend fire on turn one for 40 damage. Because then I can exhume it. Yeah, let's just do that. Could have tried to wait to put barricade in play or something, but in practice, not likely to work. Ow. But my face, though. It's okay, we're fighting Hexagos. Easy fight. Alex is here, Heavy Blade is here. I don't hate Heavy Blade, especially not with Red Skull. I don't hate Heavy Blade here. I skipped the Sword Boomerang. I should probably take the Heavy Blade. Don't think flex is good. Armaments can be good, though. Armaments can be very good. Let's take an armaments. And I wanted the event, so let's do it. We've got extra health. Let's click. If I go below red skull value here, good. Damn it. <laughs> Wait, that's not what I wanted? Take more of my health, please. Never lucky? Question mark. <laughs> Lab key, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I mean, I'll take the relic, even though it's kind of a crap relic. Good enough reason to take a fusion hammer, for example. It's funny. Battle Trance makes Fiend Fire and Armaments very happy, allowing us to draw lots more cards. Seeing Red could be kind of cool, too. Second in Flame, not terrible, but definitely taking the card draw here. 100%. And I am taking... Yeah, we have to take another event at this point. And it's a good one. We get to remove a card. Down one strike sounds great to me. In fact, the more strikes we can remove, probably the better. And a red slaver. Might want to set up um, red skull for hexaghost here. I think that's probably a good idea. So, if we want to do that, we need to get to 34 health after the fight, which means ending the fight on 28 health. Which means we need to take, what, 15? Hmm. 15. Yes, 15. Do I feel I still learn things by playing Spire? I do. I do. Game is a never-ending well of learning, really. Kind of crazy like that. This is awkward. We're going to get attacked for 21 next turn, probably. We can just kill next turn. Maybe I don't set up the Red Skull. Hexaghost will do it on turn two for us, I suppose. 
My other option is take 21. Well, take 16 here. 39 minus 16. Goes to 23 plus 6. We end up at 29. Going into Hexagos. That's not too bad, I guess. Or we can have 45. It goes very much a damage race here. 29 is a good number for that fight. Okay. We'll do 29, I guess. The plan is partially to beat Hexagos by playing Fiendfire, probably twice. Question is, what's our upgrade though? Is it Battle Trance in Flame or Armaments? I think it's Battle Trance over Pommel Strike, probably. Do I want any of these? Not really. Not even Body Slam? Not yet. There's some potential for Body Slam, but not in the Hexagos fight. And I like these potions. I really do like the Battle Trance for getting the bigger Fiend Fires. I'm not feeling armaments yet. Let's, yeah, let's do Battle Trance, and if I need a multi upgrade, we'll do Blessing of the Forge. Seems like Spire Streamers try to aim around 18 cards after Act 1, is that true? Uh, my usual thinking is add 5 cards to the base deck. I definitely broke the rules here, but that's because they're good cards, and I didn't even actually want to add the Bash. And then if any if you can get removes, good, usually. Almost always you'll you'll take him if you get him. You don't get a lot of yeah, this is why we want a red skull. You don't get a lot of control over whether you get to remove or not, though. Do I just do this? This looks pretty good, right? This is 13 times 7. I could choose one card to keep. Arma's not a bad choice. I don't care about barricade here. We should probably keep armaments. We'll use the attack potion with vulnerable if we need it. I keep the armor. That's a pretty good start. Probably gonna forge pot next turn, so we can do upgraded bash, upgraded defend, play the exhumed to get back fiend fire. I think I want the five hit points here. Yeah, I'm really gonna need that vulnerable. I'm gonna delete a lot of cards soon. that back. Hoping we can delete more burns here. We get Battle Trance Fiend Fire next turn. That's going to be our sort of win con here. Uh, yeah. But then we're going to have very few cards left. This is a clear warning. Let's see. What is this? This is 22 times 7 which is almost a kill. Good enough. Or wait, was that actually just immediately a kill? I count that we could not lose any health. We did that. It was off by one card though. Either way, that was excellent. We defeat the Hexaghost, we keep one of our potions and we get through to the next act. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. 
Lugubrious. It's quite a word. Reaper with Red Skull, definitely a little tempting. Also, we have Inflame and Exhume, so it's kind of awesome, actually. Brutality has some utility here, too, getting us even more cards in hand. And allowing us to control our health maybe more precisely. But yeah, I really like Reaper with, uh, with all the things we have going on, given that we have Strength Gain. Honestly, one Inflame's usually enough to make Reaper good, but add the Exhume in and we're talking real nice. So I will personally take a Reaper here as a way to maintain health, and I will definitely take a Runic Pyramid, which will make our Fiend Fire absurd. Makes the Barricade kind of interesting, makes the Armaments really good, makes the Battle Trance really good. Fiend Fire means we don't discard our hand at the end of each turn, allowing for all sorts of fun setup. Although Fiend Fire... Plus, something like Feed and Reaper can make awkward deckmates at times. I'm not overly concerned. How good are we at Act 2 here? I would say we're moderately good. Currently, we don't have a great answer to multi-enemy fights. Which is concerning, because we're fighting the Collector at the end of the Act. Hmm. I have a reasonable amount of money and a meal ticket. We should be able to stay healthy through a lot of combats, so maybe we want to take a lot of combats this act. I don't think I want to go careening immediately into an elite, which means we're probably going to this rest site. Do something like this. This looks pretty generous. But we might want to maybe reevaluate once we get right up to the elite here, or we might want to consider going to the shop if things get immediately dire. We could go this way. I don't think I ever want to go far left. Does a Fiend Fire and Pyramid lean towards making the deck larger? It can, although we want to kind of consistently get that Fiend Fire to deliver. It's able to deal so much damage that um, we can just rely on it to force an immediate end to a lot of confrontations. For example, this enemy only has 84 health at full. Fiend Fire with a 10 card hand will deal 90. So all I have to do to defeat this enemy is get to 10 cards in hand and then play Fiend Fire. That means we can play Flame Barrier Defend on this turn, drop to 10 next turn, and then just play Fiend Fire to win. Excellent. Let's take four damage and heal six. Healing from the Shelled Parasite on floor one of Act Two. How often do you get to do that? Noza, thanks for the prime sub. And I'll take another Inflame, because we have a Reaper. Will I take a Relic for a Curse? That Curse is pretty bad with the Runic Pyramid. I'd basically have to go to the shop if I take it. That's how I feel. How about no? That's my opinion. How about no? These two look like they're trouble. Hopefully Reaper is here to let us recoup some of our health. Maybe. But we're going to get absolutely bodied here. Yeah, I think we go Flame Barrier and Flame. Are they going to bring me below half? Yes, and we can use that to our advantage here, right? We're going to take 10 more if I Flame Barrier, go to 33. That is below half. Let's do it. I wish I had Art of War. Oh, good lord, they both attacked me again. That's exceedingly rude. I guess I can Reaper Exhume Reaper. It's not the worst thing in the world. But I would <laughs> take a lot of damage to the face. Hmm. I can kill one with three attacks, prevent the 18 damage in the first place. It's not as good as healing for 11 by 2, though. It's just a 50-50 whether they attack a third time or not. That's right. Defend Reaper here. Let's see. Can I get them both next turn if I exhume Reaper now? I think they'll get away, won't they? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because I can't get them both with Strike Fiend Fire. So I can't actually double Reaper. I should have thought about that. Bummer. Puts me on exactly 34, though. Maybe that's the best thing. So want a Twin Strike. Not an unupgraded Twin Strike. Definitely don't want to clash. I don't think I'm going to this shop. We're going to go to that one. With loads of money. All I have to do is continue to not die. In combats. It doesn't look that hard. Let's see. 13 times 7. It's 91. There's a Feel No Pain. Okay, when a card is exhausted, gain three block. Now this barricade has real potential later in the run. Although I think probably still not yet, as it's hard to get into play, but we've been carrying it around as a curse for now. I think it's going to become important later. That's why we took it in the first place. Because I have a suspicion we're going to get to use it. I really like these potions, and I have other ways to heal. I'm not going to take a regen potion. I really want front load potions to, for this elite fight, because if this is Gremlin Leader or Slavers, I need a, a definitive answer to the immediate damage needs of the fight. Let's do it. Hello there. strength. Do it like this. Excellent. Found out I had no damage cards left. We're fine. All is well, I think. It's pretty fine. Good. Health is even trending upwards. And we get a third in flame. This one's upgraded, so I will take it. Although I'm a little bit worried we have too many powers at this point. We are in pretty good shape to take an Elite if we want to. That said, we have many good upgrades, and there are more Elites coming. I don't want to push it too hard here, especially not with a Pyramid deck. I'd like to get Armaments upgraded. I would like to... What's the second upgrade? Yeah, Mummified Hand Waiting Room. No kidding. With too many powers comes too many responsibilities. But yeah, definitely armaments to affect every other card in our hand. And then I guess we could upgrade Pummel Strike, maybe. Or one of the Inflames, I guess. I like Pummel Strike. Could have opted out of this Elite. Maybe it was correct to fight the Elite after all. Oh well. Not going to stress it. We have a surprise visit from the merchant here offering us a mummified hand. Convenient. Tez91, thanks for the prime sub and the 18 months of support. Ask and ye shall receive, Twitch chat. 
Thanks for manifesting that. Could even consider metallicize from this position. Currently, I'm going to remove a strike. And we're one gold off the shrug, huh? All right. 49 gold it is. Convenient. Maybe too convenient. And then we also got strength. Start each combat with one strength. Very good. Oh, that's right. They're tiny. Also, our hand is terrible. So, yeah, potions. <laughs> this is what the potions are for. Ouch. Let's see, they're attacking for 34 damage, exactly half of our health. Actually, you're telling me I can get optimal Red Skull setup? I guess I can also play the whole hand, right? I'm not getting weakened on turn one. Maybe I do just set up Red Skull here and we heal it all back with Reaper. I'm willing to try. I could just play this for free. But then I don't have the three strength, so... Bring me to exactly half health, please. No Reaper. Alas. That's quite the bad draw. Might want to attack potion here. I'm gonna do it. Cleave. There's some area damage at least. Cleave strike kills the back guy. I can flame barrier. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Reaper and exhum. They are attacking for a lot this turn. Let's go Reaper defend defend next turn. Something like Reaper's strike. Kill the front one. And I can exhum the Reaper. Feel no pain Reaper exhum doesn't quite get the kill. Play a little short on energy here. No, I'm not weak. Okay, we end the fight with 56 health. We get a Nun Shaku for a bit more energy and a Fairy in a Bottle for a one time resurrection. If we wanted the Sword Boomerang, here it is with an upgrade. There's also Power Through and Bloodletting. Bloodletting in particular looks very strong, allowing us to play Reaper more easily. We'll take a Bloodletting for sure here and upgrade it immediately. Because I think it's very strong. Oh, that's what you're asking. Uh, uh, yes, we've played the Downfall mod on stream quite a bit. Usually I do a modded day of Slay the Spire when the sub bar below my face fills up. So approximately once a month we have a modded gameplay day. And this is what the explosive pot was for. Downfall definitely can be overcomplicated. That can... It's a totally valid criticism of it, I think. Three double bash. Get bashed on, sir. What is this nonsense? There's Reaper. Now it's free. Good. To full health with me, I guess.
We get the Courier, meaning our money goes a bit further now. And I will take a Battle Trance, number two here, allowing us to fill up our hand more easily. Even if we draw into the other Battle Trance, we can easily use the retain power of the Pyramid to make it so that that's not a problem. Should have played the Exhum there for a little bit of block, I guess. Doesn't seem like it matters too much. Strength Potion's good. Dual Wield with Reaper and actually with Powers and Mummy Hand. This Dual Wield is nuts. Create any copies of an attack or better yet, a power card. We can do many broken things with that. I can go to this shop to remove a card or I can just keep going. Given that I have Courier, I think I'll just take another fight here. How do Courier and Membership cards stack? They do so... Multiplicatively, meaning the total discount is Charge Nunchaku. I guess it matters for the collector fight. Sure. A card that kills stuff. Welcome. Welcome. It's like garbage turn one. Oh well. I don't think I need too much help in this fight. We have a fairy in a bottle, even if the worst occurs, which is uh, currently happening. No. Okay, here's some cards. Go ahead and blow the thing right now. Here we are. Heavy Blade Plus. Let's go Bash Reaper. Zoom the Reaper. Let's also play the Heavy Blade. Okay, our worst case scenario turned in instantly into greatness. We now deal um, 270 minus 27 is 200 and 33? 243? Lots. More than enough. Okay, well that ended quickly and decisively in our favor. We've got lots of good pieces for the late game now. And now that we have a barricade and a feel no pain, we can start to think about corruption. There's also impervious and limit break. Limit Break is crazy good with all this strength, actually, especially given that we can exhume it to get it back. Play it again. All of them are great, actually. I do like this Corruption a lot to allow us to play a lot of cards. Though having our skills be replayable is not bad. Limit Break seems unnecessary. I can kind of get behind that, especially we can dual wield in flame if we want to. I really like Corruption the more I think about it. Take a Corruption here. 
We got Pandora's Box, Calling Bell, or Slaver's Caller. I actually do not hate Pandora's here, with seven cards getting transformed. Slaver's Caller is also perfectly reasonable, giving us more energy during boss elite combats, although I do wonder how much we really need it with the Corruption and the Mummified Hand. Yeah, ho hopefully this run has been a really good highlight of, of why I picked um, Fiendfire over Bludgeon on Floor 1. Even though Bludgeon is ostensibly better for the first few floors, the, the Fiendfire quickly scales to nonsensical levels of damage that Bludgeon can never do. Three energy deck is scary, but with a mummified hand and a corruption, we're not really a three energy deck. We have all the energy we could ever want, really. Let's take the box. Give me more powers and stuff. Power, power, power. Scaling attacks. I like it. I like it. Although now we're a bit short on skills. Also, I'm not sure the evolves are actually any good, but uh, here we are. Here we are. So it goes. We'd we'll like to remove a couple cards now. We should probably hit at least one shop. We can do three elites in a shop, is that true? No. Yes, that is true, here we go. That's the three elite in the shop path. That means no rest sites. Do I care about upgrading any of this garbage? Not really, because armaments is here. We have four in flames, is that true? That is true, we have four in flames. DP Knox, thanks for the prime sub and the five months. Kinda hoping we're not fighting the awakened one, I'm gonna be honest here. Do I want events or combats? Combats look good. Let's do something like this then. Lots of relics, lots of card rewards to find skills. Lots of good stuff. all that. These three can be a bit of a jerk. All right. Make more Reapers. More. Yeah, so does it feel like we're lacking energy? Why Dog Studios? Thanks for the prime sub and the nine months of support. Have a shrug here. is a bit weird. It's gonna dual wield to feel no pain for this fight, I guess.
final card, huh? Curious. like we need a body slam at the moment. Any chances some more Cobalt Core today? Yes, we're going to be doing that after the Spire. Playing some good old Cobalt Core, getting some more memories unlocked. Looking forward to it, personally. Okay, let's go Arma Barricade. Bloodletting Flame Barrier. All right, turn one. Now I feel the need to kill the Exploder. Maybe the Guardian. Hmm. Here. No damage, okay. Well, we could take some short-term damage here. I'm confident we can get it back, though. help, that is. Hmm. All right. Not yet. Although... Yeah, not yet. Heard of it, huh? There we go. Perfect. Oh no. Hmm. Quite do that right. Close enough. Should maybe consider another armaments here. We definitely have a limited amount of skills since we got rid of all the defense. Magneto Head, thanks for the prime sub in the 11 months, almost an entire century. More skills, please. This could be a weird fight. Um, what do you got? Better, I think. This enemy can try to curse us, which is not desirable. Can also hit us pretty hard sometimes. block. So there's the curse adding intent. That's the one we got to be careful about. Of course, we get a zoom here. I was worried you might do that. Problem is, there's essentially no intent that's not terrible for us in this position. Hmm. It's heat fire. That does make the most block. We lose the Reaper, though. Let's 
let's see, 23 times 6. It's not enough, right? It's only 138. We're a little bit short of a kill there. Um, what if I boomerang fiend fire? No, because of malleable. Exhume first loses a card in hand. There's nothing in the exhaust pile, so it simply gets rid of itself. That also means it's not more blocked than just playing the fiend fire. Oh, you can't see the exhaust pile, though. I am blocking it. That's fair. But yeah, there is, there's nothing in the exhaust pile currently. What if I energy pot to go heavy blade fiend fire? That would be... I think that is a kill. That looks like a kill. No, 23 by 5. Yes, that kills. Take the way out of this fight, thank you. Don't like that we're at half health, although I do like that we're at exactly half health. I carried this barricade all the way here for nothing. Guess I'll take a ghostly armor. So it goes. We also don't have to fight this elite if we don't want to. We might be scared after the jaw worms kill me. Ah! <laughs> Uh-oh. Actually, I think this Pandora's box might have been a mistake, to be honest. Looks bad. We're taking 34 plus 12 equals we're dead. Fairy in a bottle will save us here, but we are straight up dying to these three, and there's nothing we can do about it. I guess that means I don't even play the armaments, right? We go in Flame, Evolve, Thunderclap, Rampage. The worms. The worms are angry. Ow. Oh no. <laughs> We're in real trouble now. Hmm. I have to rely on... Mummy Hand to not die. Spooky. Spooky. Okay, that's good. That's good. I do, in fact, get to play the whole hand. Okay, we're not dead. We're just really, really, really close to dead. bloodletting. Pro tip. Net gain of health from that fight, believe it or not. Minus the, uh, fairy in a bottle. Doesn't seem that bad, right? I don't know, we're, we're currently critically lacking card draw. We really can't take more cards that don't draw more cards, I feel like. Not sure about this elite. So yeah, Body Slam might be tempting as a damage system, but it's, it's not in practice gonna help. We want fewer cards, not more, from here. I do think we're going to need more relics, so I'm going to risk it for the biscuit here. This is not what I wanted to see. But... I do think it could do good work for us. Yeah. Fair enough. This turn better be good. 
just be Sprite Dad here. Sure looks like we are. Terrifying. Alright, burn that blood for blood for more cards, I guess. Hey, there we go. Okay, that's a bit better. So we do what? Corruption, then Arma, then Bloodletting. Is that enough to survive this hand? Yes, because of Flame Barrier, surely. We can kill two daggers as well. Okay, Corruption first. Makes just about everything free. And if I Bloodletting play the Barricade, then one of the other attacks is freeing. We have Rampage here. Can't draw off the Pummel Strike. We are definitely going low on health again, unfortunately. Really low. I think we're going back to... Wait, are we? Hold on. No, I need to kill two Daggers here. So it's Bloodletting, Pummel Strike, Heavy Blade, Arma on the Flame Barrier. Okay. Yeah, that has to be it. I don't think all of our damage could have killed Repto. I should have evaluated that, though. Hopefully this way we get to leave the fight with more health. Spooky, though. Definitely spooky. Not killing me yet. We have Dual Wield Reaper here. That's a great sign. Although... I can't kill the Dagger with the Reaper. Bash does it, though. Bash is good. Dual Wield with Bash. I don't think that's wise. Yeah, here we go. Arma everything, play the Feel No Pain. Could just Fiend Fire and win. Like to make multiple Reapers free if possible. There's one. So I just play Reaper Reaper? Yeah, let me do that. I guess I don't even need the second one, huh? Fair enough. Let's do it this way, then. All right, back to full health. Like we never had a problem at all. The boot is here. Entrench is here. Here we go. Entrench plus, no less. Double your block with Barricade. Now we're putting something together. I am not going to mess with these two. These guys will kill me. Super, super deadly. Well, they might kill me. We could kill them with Fiend Fire early, but we might also not. And because our deck is very vulnerable to bad draw orders currently, I'm not going to mess with one of the most dangerous fights in the game. No, thank you. Not today. Let's fight Mini Nemesis instead. He seems... It seems a lot less threatening overall. Until we get 45 on turn 2, and then... Then it feels pretty threatening after all. Get booted on, sir. Or other entity. Now. Take that back. Thanks. And I'll give it back to you if you want. Sure. Have fun with my hit points.
guess that's fine. Whatevs. Like it even matters. Back to full again. Shockwave is excellent, applying weak and vulnerable. Great with the corruption, great with the feel no pain. Excellent overall. Gotta take the blue key over the happy flower. More energy might have been nice, but it's not needed here. Once again, we face some nerds. You can see this run would be a lot more comfortable with something like a feed. If we were able to have more max health, it wouldn't be so close to death all the time. Skidmarmy Mark, thanks for the Prime sub and the six months of support. A whole heck and a half year. Thank you, thank you. Bonk. Many powers currently. Too many in flames, too many evolves. Power through goes with fiend fire. We also have the evolve. I really need blocks, so we're gonna take it. Well, I'm not 100% convinced by it. Giant head I don't see is a problem here. Especially not with early barricade. To actually successfully la nail that, to land that, rather. Uh, let's go bloodletting and keep playing stuff. I guess. That's enough block for at least this turn. Upgraded True Grit seems kind of weak, but maybe necessary. Still need more ways to block. Ways to delete attacks is good too. Sure. And we hit the shop with 490 gold. There's a freaking Dark Embrace and a Dolly's Mirror here. So I would say, Twitch chat, we have made it. This run is now OP enough that nothing can stop it. Not even the Awakened One. I also really like the Art of War here, giving us bonus energy after not playing an attack on our turn. Too many powers? Here's some more. Yeah, no kidding. I think I'm duping Entrench, by the way. Why double our strength when we can just double our block, Twitch chat? Toxic Egg is here. Dead Branch! Dead Branch, no! No, it's fine. Uh, I'm gonna lose Rampage. Yeah, we don't actually care that much about Dead Branch. Shrug's great. Sentinel's also good, but I can't afford it. I'm happy with this. Am Yo Yo, thanks for the 25 months of support.
pleasure to have you. Hey, yeah. Shovel. Very cute. Not worth taking metallicize here, not even with the mummy hand. It's just too slow at doing what it does. Making block, of course, being what it does. I'll dual wield that in flame. Explosion time could actually be a bit of an issue here. Looks like we're fine though. We just play Fiend Fire and then we draw a lot more cards. Thank you, Dark Embrace, for drawing me 10 cards in this moment. Seems absurd, quite frankly. Another entrench. Excellent. Let's recall. This deck feels illegal. It is illegal. This deck is great. Deck is peak late game ironclad. Just kind of like do whatever until late game. And then by the late game, you have the overpowered combo assembled, which is hinging on this barricade that we picked up from the matching keep. Or no, that was exhumed from Etching Key. Barricade came from somewhere else. Of course, we ended up skipping a later barricade, but had we not found that barricade, the one that we have now would be kind of key. Just not take any damage here. Rely on our four energy per turn and get some silly stuff done. Hmm. Yeah, too many non attack cards though. Alright, that I'm gonna dual wield. That's too good to ignore. to exhume yet. Ow. Do it.
That's a lot of block. Perfect. Let's see, is dual wield still in the draw pile? It sure is. We can go back to full health easily. And yeah, no body slam in this deck. We've actually skipped it repeatedly. Because I think it, although it is good, once we're set up, it interferes with the process of setting up in the first place. And once we're set up, we don't care whether we have a, a body slam or not. As you can see, we're winning regardless. Okay, second boss is the Time Eater. No Awakened One after all. There was no need for concern, as it turns out. Uh, company. Yeah, this makes life a lot easier, not having to deal with the Awakened One. I think we'd be able to survive even if we weren't, if we, even if we were fighting the Awakened One, but I think it would be really tricky. I would have to think about stuff. Nobody wants to do that. a bit early to fiend fire, but I'm tempted to. I'll draw into all the good stuff. Although I lose dual wield and, and such. I guess I could dual wield the fiend fire. No, I can't, because then I can't play it. Mm. Thinking is for nerds, and the clad ain't no nerd. Compelling argument, really. Use the attack potion. I don't hate that idea. It's decent for the shield and spear, though. Yeah, let's use the attack potion. Drop kick. That's good. Okay, I can drop kick into playing power through. I really like that, actually. It saves me a lot of health here. Now I'm going to go Bloodletting, Dual Wield, Fiend Fire. Fiend Fire. That's more like it. Turn. He's again. Oh, 
All right, we have full health going into Act 4. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of these health fluctuations and overpowered barricade nonsense. Have I been here before? Is it upgrade or dig at the final fire? Let's see. Upgrade would be what? I don't mind upgrading Dark Embrace. I really like the True Grit upgrade especially. Actually, upgrade True Grit might be the winner here. So I never have to rely on the random exhaust hitting a not Fiend Fire or not Reaper, for example. <laughs> Seems like a good idea to get that True Grit upgraded. I'm not going to dig here. Very helpful. And energy potion looks pretty good. Regen potion's okay. Distilled chaos could be very strong. Distilled chaos could be like draw three and play three. I think we should take the distilled chaos over the energy pot. Let's take that. And one shrug for the road, or I can swap the fear pot for the energy pot. Let's do one shrug for the road. Bit more block. Dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Doom Train. Did you hear about the person who invented a new type of shovel? It's a groundbreaking invention. Distilled chaos into the fiend fire. Yeah, that's actually a possibility. That's true. That part's a little scary. Bailey, thanks for the 54 months. The mommy hand. I guess let's go pummel. Let's go pummel here. Oh my, okay. That's what you want to see. All powers all day. So Arma, upgrade the hand. Let's play the Evolve, because I, I definitely want to draw extra off of this garbage. And if we can just chain react the powers, all the better. Oh yes. That's what you like. Every power in play. That was just like 10 free energy from Mummy Hand, basically. Maybe five. And we're going to draw back up to a 10-card hand here. I'll keep the Arma then. Hmm. Spooky. Corruptions here. Good. Full block exactly, by the way. Kind of cool. Still missing... No, we have Barricade in play. Just want as much block as possible here. Yeah, already feeling the power of that upgraded True Grit. by the way. All right, seems good. Make that 700 block. Boom. We get a boat thingy, that'll help. And another true grit. I'll take it. We have almost 40 cards going into the heart here. Two reasonable potions and full HP. I couldn't ask for a much better 
uh, draw, and I definitely couldn't ask for a better opening hand here. This is basically perfect as far as opening hand goes. And the big reason for that is we have dual wield and feel no pain here together. So what I'm allowed to do here on turn one is play ghostly armor, then dual wield the feel no pain, and then with mummy hand, I'm allowed to play all five of these powers for no problem, no energy. We can keep the distilled chaos for later. But that means we're going to get nine block per exhausted card. That's great with the barricade coming up. Do take a bit of beat of death, but we should be okay with the turn two horn cleat. I don't think we ever die here. It's multi hit anyway. That's a little garbage. We can do entrench, evolve, dark embrace, then distill. I don't even have to distill, but I think I want to. Does my win rate as defect with mummy hand? It's not 100%. But it is substantially higher than my uh, win rate on Defect without Dark Embrace. Or, uh, sorry, without um, Mummy Hand. I was looking at Dark Embrace as I said that. Look at that, Entrench doubling the Horn Cleat. That's pretty good. I have to Entrench first, because otherwise we get less block from it. Owing to Beat of Death. Okay, actually, great turn to draw Flame Barrier. Nice, and we got the wound randomly. Good job, unupgraded True Grit. We actually overblocked. Excellent. Although, I can't play Barricade here. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe slime power through entrench. I can't play the barricade because it could randomly hit the thunderclap and then we're dead. We're just straight dead <laughs> if barricade makes thunderclap free. Bloodletting is not on the top of the deck. We just played it last round, so no hope of that. In fact, top of the deck is more likely to be void. Whoops, the slime could draw. Slime burst. Okay, that's not a void, thank you. Let's just go power through Entrench. Next turn I can play the Barricade, then I can play Fiend Fire for nine times nine blocks, so we full block. So we're never dead um, in the next three turns if I do this. That's pretty good. Block for 36. Don't play Battle Trance. I could even do Reaper if you can fire. Although, not if I draw the Void. Hmm. I don't ever die to that, right? Oh, why not Fear Potion then? I probably should have. We can use it now with the Shockwave, but yeah, you're right. I totally should have used the Fear Potion there. That would have been the better timing for it. Alternately, just playing the Fiend Fire right now looks pretty dang solid. Draw into some good stuff. We can play Corruption next turn, and once Corruption's down, we should be fine. So I don't think we actually need Reaper. That's my analysis here. And if we do, we can exhume it. Gotta say, though, this looks pretty solidly in the bag at this point. As a 
have, you know, 999 block. Seems pretty good. <laughs> All right. Be gone, fiends. I like that the Blood for Blood ended up being uh, pretty important from the uh, Pandora's box here. GG. GG, Twitch chat. That was a bit of a struggle despite the pyramid, but a thoroughly well-executed plan in the end. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.